Hey guys, this is Drake. Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we are talking about RED DSMC2 cameras in a live broadcast or any kind of live streaming workflow. So specifically, I want to talk about the older DSMC2 cameras, uh, not the Komodo or the Raptor. Um, great cameras. I use Dragon X and Gemini cameras a lot. They are still really powerful cameras that you can use in your live workflow. But today, I want to talk about specifically color with the Dragon sensor on a DSMC2. Now, these cameras are phenomenal cameras, but what I've experienced is their Rec 709 or any of their built-in looks, they don't look quite how I want them to right out of the camera, out of the SDI port. And that's fine because those cameras are made for cinema. You, They're not using the built-in color that comes out of the SDI port for films and things like that. They are using graded post-production looks to get the look that they want to achieve. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you about what I usually do to make the RED DSMC2s, specifically with the Dragon sensor, look the best that it possibly can. And the way to achieve that is with a LUT, installing a LUT on your camera. Now, I've built custom LUTs before, I've graded a lot of footage before, but the best LUT that I've found for a Rec. 709 perfect, even color is the Rec. 709 LUT from Buttery LUTs. Um, I'm gonna put a link down in the description below. I'm not affiliated with them at all, but they have fantastic LUTs for all cameras, but specifically uh, RED DSMC2 cameras. I feel like their Rec. 709 is the best that I've ever seen, and it would be really hard for me to get that level of quality myself. So I wanna show you what I mean. We're gonna dive right into uh, color grading some of this footage and I will show you what I mean by Red's Rec. 709 versus the Buttery LUT Rec. 709. So here we have our project pulled up. This is some footage that I've been testing with. This is shot on a Red Dragon X. That's uh, me in the background. This is with a 50 to 1000 millimeter lens. So as you can see, this looks very flat, very log. This is the output of, that the camera shoots. Um, it's its log format. And if we are in our editor over here, this is the the master editor, when you're using RAW, it gives you this second tab up here to adjust color settings. So I'm gonna go ahead and select um, their Rec. 709 down here. Rec. 709, boom. Out of camera, that's their Rec. 709, that's what it looks like. Doesn't look bad, but I do think it could look better. So let's go out of here, let's go back to our red wide gamma and our log. And we can come over here and add a LUT. Now, this works if you're in RAW. If you're not in RAW, you use Lumetri Color in Premiere, and you can come over here and add a LUT as well. So these are my buttery LUTs. Uh, this is their Natural Rec. 709. So if you add that, you can see the skin tone immediately looks less saturated and more natural. And I think all, all around it's not as crushed. Um, let's skip forward here to where I'm sitting down. There's a good frame. So let's go ahead and uh, let's remove this natural let real fast back to our log, um, back to our effects controls, and let's go ahead and enable Red's uh, Rex 109 one more time. You can see it's a little bit more blown out here. It's a little yellowy, it's a little blown out there. Let's go ahead and back and let's add our what and you can instantly see how much more natural the skin tone looks everywhere even the lettering feels more white the dynamic range just looks a lot better so let's go to a different example um, this is a great example because there's lots of color in this this is a church that I've been working with um, and helping them improve their color. So let's go ahead and uh, throw the Rec. 709 on here. So you can see it's like very highlighty. Um, 
the skin tone doesn't look super natural. It looks like lots of pop and lots of contrast. So let's go ahead and go back to our log, add our LUT. And you can instantly see how much more natural his skin tone looks. It, nothing is like popping out of the frame. It just looks so much more even and natural looking in this frame. Okay, here's another great example with some footage. Um, let's go ahead and throw the red Rex 9. As you can see again, pretty uh, contrasty around his face, like lots of highlights. Uh, the skin tone doesn't look super natural, looks kind of blotchy. Let's go ahead and put it back to log. And then let's go ahead and throw up our LUT. And as you can see, it instantly looks way more natural. Its skin tone looks normal, not so blotchy. It's not super poppy. It looks a heck of a lot better. Okay, let's go over one more example. Um, this is more concerty, lots of colored lights and everything. Uh, let's go ahead and throw in there. Red Sparks 09. As you can see, very contrasty. Um, as we get closer to our subject here. It's a very contrasty, uh, tiny bit blown out uh, Rex 9 as we've been experiencing with everything else. Let's go back to log, grab our Rex 9 LUT. And again, mainly in the skin tones, this is a very red clip, but the skin tones look so much better and less blown out. It's just a more even look. So as you can see in that example, the red Rex 709 is good, but it's not perfect. And this buttery Lutz is just way more smooth. All the colors aren't a little staggered. It's like, if you look at the scopes, it's even across the board. It just looks way, way cleaner. The skin tone mainly looks so much better on the Buttery LUTs versus the Red Rex 709. And this is why I recommend using the Buttery LUT for your live workflow. So real fast, I wanna show you how to put a LUT on your Red DSMC2. If you've never done it before, it's very, very simple. Uh, first, you gotta go to Buttery LUTs and download your LUT or any LUT place that you want to buy your LUT from. Download those LUTs, unzip the file, and then put your Red Mini Mag in your card reader connected to your computer and on the root folder, make a folder called LUTs. Make sure that that folder is in the root folder of your mini mag and then drag whatever LUTs you want into that folder. Next, you're gonna be putting the card in your camera, let it initialize and then you go into your menu, image and LUTs. Uh, next to the drop down, there is a import export button and you'll see your LUTs tap on your LUT and send it over to your camera. In the drop down, you can select uh, whatever LUT you want to have on. And then make sure to check the checkbox to enable 3D LUT. There's a couple more steps though to get it to apply to your SDI port uh, properly. So first off, you're gonna go to menu, you're gonna go to image pipeline, and then you wanna set it to red wide gamma RGB. So that gives you the flat look for the buttery LUTs look to apply its technical LUT with all the color. And lastly, you want this LUT to send down your SDI port or HDMI port out to your broadcast room. So you gotta go to menu and monitoring and then select whatever you have. And in our case, it's SDI. Go down to the bottom and you wanna select red wide gamma log 3G plus LUT. The plus LUT adds that LUT to your red wide gamma like we were doing in post. And then boom, you have that look sending down your SDI port to your broadcast room. And it would be the same if you want it on your top monitor or the HDMI port, you have to select it for each one. Well guys, I really hope that that helps you enhance your live broadcast with Red DSMC2 cameras. If you haven't seen it yet, I have a video on the Red Komodo and the settings I like to use for this guy in a live broadcast situation. There's no LUT I use for Komodo, but I really recommend the buttery LUTs for the DSMC2 cameras. And as always, if you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments below and I will get back to them. And if you want to see more content like this, make sure to hit subscribe and stick around for more.